Okay guys, this video will be about 6.1 roots and radical expressions and 6.2 multiplying and dividing radical expressions. The end of class felt rushed and uh, inadequate for covering the examples I wanted to do so we're gonna go ahead and redo those examples make sure that even if you took notes in class that you start over and you take notes now um, so here we go we discussed that the nth root of a power a to the nth always equals a and we're always going to assume that the root is positive uh, no matter if the index is odd or even so just keep that in mind the first example that we did was the square root of 16 x to the eighth so our goal is to write this expression um, so that we have some powers that have 2 as an exponent in the radicand. So we would rewrite this as the square root of 4 squared times x to the fourth squared. The next step would be to know that the square root of 4 squared is 4 and the square root of x to the fourth squared is x to the fourth and that would be the simplified form of this radical expression notice that when we rewrote x 16 x to the eighth we used two powers that had an exponent of two so that we could simplify through the radical sign the easiest way to get x to the fourth squared would be to take the exponent 8 and divide it by 2 that tells you that you have x to the fourth and if you square that 4 times 2 is 8 alright the second example would be the cube root of a to the sixth b to the ninth and we can rewrite that as the cube root of a squared to the third times b cubed to the third. And based on the property we stated earlier, we know that the cube root of a squared to the third is a squared, and we know that the cube root of b cubed to the third is b cubed. The last and final example would be the fourth root of x to the eighth, y to the twelfth. So let's rewrite the radicand so that we have fourth power, fourth power exponents. So that would give us x to the second to the fourth and y to the third to the fourth and the fourth root of x squared to the fourth equals x squared and the fourth root of y cubed to the fourth equals y cubed and don't worry about trying to determine if y cubed is positive or not we're always going to assume that the root is positive. Okay. That is a much better summary of the work that we tried to fit into the last five minutes of class today. So here is a picture of the notes that we tried to rush into the last five minutes of class. And if you look at them closely, you'll see that the simplification of the examples we covered are different than the ones I just did in the video. Um, it's okay, we make mistakes and it was my fault for trying to rush at the end of class, but can you look at this work and determine where the errors were made?
What assumptions did I make that aren't correct? Which properties prove that those assumptions are not correct? Okay, moving to 6.2, multiplying and dividing radical expressions. There are just two basic concepts that you need to know. In order to multiply rational expressions, it must be the case that the index of each expression is the same. So if A and B are real numbers, and they are radicands of two radicals with the same index, we are allowed to combine those two real numbers by multiplying them under the same radical. The same is true when dividing radical expressions. If the index is the same, then it is okay for you to divide those radicals in such a way. So we will go deeper into this in class tomorrow, but this is the basic property combining radical expressions. If you are multiplying, we call that products. Or if you're dividing, we call that quotients. Before ending the video, let's go ahead and look at some examples. Example A. Can you simplify the product of the radical expression? The cubed root of 6 times the square root of 2? No, because the indexes aren't the same. So one is a cube root and the other is a square root. So we cannot further simplify this. What about the cube root of negative 4 times the cube root of 2? Yes, you can. Because this is the same thing as saying the cube root of negative 4 times 2. This is allowed because the index of each radical is the same. Further simplification brings you to the cube root of negative 8. And we know that 2 is the cube root of negative 8. Or negative 2, rather. Because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 equals negative 8. What about this example? The square root of 18x to the fifth divided by the square root of 2x cubed. This can be simplified because the index of each of these radicals is the same. Thus, we could write this as the square root of 18x to the fifth divided by 2x cubed. We know that 18 divided by 2 is 9, and we know that x to the fifth divided by x to the third is x to the fifth minus 3. Further simplifying to the square root of 9x squared. Now, remember, the square root of 9x squared is the same thing as the square root of 9 times the square root of x squared, giving us 3 times x. This part of the expression is the nth root of a power of n. So, this simplifies to 3x. We will get more practice in class tomorrow, but I think this is good for now. Thanks for watching the video.